，有人需要用广东话翻译。Okay, again, just doing it all in English now. Okay, okay, okay? so good. Questions? Questions? Yes. 等一等，誒、uh, ，第二個麥俾佢唔該。Hi, um, Mr. Femic, I'm a host. Uh, thank you very much for the film. Uh, I enjoyed it very much. Uh, I'd like to know if you have any plans on doing uh, films or uh, architecture in Asia at all? In Asia? Yes. No, uh, not yet. Uh, I did something in, uh, for another film called The Estrip in Zaipan, but this is a very strange I wouldn't call it architecture, it's a leveled, it's an airfield where the atomic bomb started, bomber plane started from in the Second World War, and it's an American landmark now in the jungle, and that's uh, very, and I filmed something in on the island of Saipan, but that has nothing to do with modern architecture or architecture I like, it's more what I don't like. <laughs> Thank you. Another question? Another question? Good. That row. Don't get me. Again, thank you very much for this beautiful symphony. Um, I know you, you know what I'm talking about. And um, I, I have one question when I see it the second time. Um, the second time? Is yeah, well, I mean, uh, the second time in the, in the cynic, uh, I saw the dialogue. Uh, ah, yeah. You yeah. Mean in the dialogue, um, when they talk about the notebook, uh, did you actually plot the notebook on the on the on that blank uh, showing screen? No, it's uh, After Effects. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's your notebook, right? Yeah, my no one. Uh, yeah, a series of my notebooks. Yeah, I, I, I think I forgot the question um, at the end of dialogue, but um, no, it, it reminds uh, me now. And now you saw the the empty yeah, yeah. space. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's my theory that you, uh, when you don't like advertisement, and so you should use the space for yourself. So uh, <laughs> that's in other films too. I I add, um, I put my own stuff on on the advertisement planes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> Great, thank you. That's the wonderful thing about modern technology. It makes it much easier. Yeah. 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 Great. Okay. Another question. No, I have a question. Mm -hmm. There is this wonderful shot, and it's it's you know you have a little bit of an under industrial wasteland, and then there is this young boy with a spade. Yes. yes. Is he planted, or no, he just no, happened to no. be there? You see, I I never I never he he was there, and if people don't mind, I filmed them, but I never asked them to be in the picture or not to be in the picture. I, we we have this. I have a very small team when I do this kind of films, and my my politics is to be micro invasive, so that I don't disturb anything. So this yeah, this was in the slums of yes. Montevideo, and it's uh, it was dangerous to film there, uh, but I uh, I walked around and I didn't care. And I, I thought that was a very lovely scene. He was shoveling in the ground. And then, of course, this building then was the one where in the, the, there's a feature film that I screened here before. And you can see it in two days it's in the afternoon. It was seen again. And that film starts in that building. Dialogue. Yeah, dialogue. Yeah, the streetscape dialogue. dialogue. Yes. Great. No, but uh, I don't like to uh, stage. Uh, sometimes people say, "Why, why aren't there so no people in your films about architecture?" Yes, it's a it's a general question, and I, for me, uh, I don't want actors or somebody acting for the film in the film. Or I don't want somebody to stay in front of the building and tell you something about the building, what is important or not. Because I think the important thing is that you yourself as the audience uh, build up uh, 
a relation to the building yourself, so that there's nothing in between you and the building. Great, so, yeah. thank you. Another question. Uh, two questions. Uh, the first question is, uh, did you have any criteria of picking the sceneries, uh, which, uh, which to take and which not to take? Yes, it's uh, uh, all the, uh, as many locations, uh, it's uh, co all the buildings by Dieste in chronological order that I could film. Yeah. There are some others which are very similar, so I couldn't film the, uh, one of them, his house, in the, the, I think it's the second sequence of the Dieste part. It starts with the Villa Macho part, which was his teacher, and there are three or four buildings at the prologue, and then it starts with the Dieste building, Eladio Dieste's name, and we couldn't get into the house that the family of him wanted us to go in, but the owner now didn't allow us to go in. So that's why we can only film it from the outside, could only film it from the outside. Um, but usually it's in chronological order, all his buildings. Second question. Uh, tonight uh, we, uh, we, s we watched uh, the chapter three and chapter four of your series. So uh, what was chapter one and chapter two about? Oh, two, um, two different films. One about uh, uh, the, they, they form a little group and I all finished them last year, so this year. And of course we can't, uh, 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 it's impossible to show them all four together always. But uh, they premiered all at the Berlinale this year. But the second film was uh, about the, um, Samuel Bickles, which is a kibbutz architect in Israel. He built like the social buildings in kibbutzim in Israel in the 40s till the 70s. And that's uh, actually in the dialogue film, the, the two guys talk about it. It's, it's not exactly, it's social, uh, it's, it's, uh, a product of, I would call it, uh, a, a social modernity, a socialist, the socialist ideas behind it. I found that very interesting when I visited all these buildings in the kibbutz. And the first film is a, a film about music, um, a group, Kreidler, it's called Recorded their album in Tbilisi in Georgia and I, I always wanted to do that to record a working process how a, a, a musical uh, album comes into existence and I did that in the recording studio and then I filmed a lot in Tbilisi in the town and I filmed and there I integrated a lot of my notebooks too so it's a totally different film. The Bickles film is a little bit like this film, like chronological order and a work of one guy, like a catalog. Mm. Great, thank you. Another question? No questions? Oh, good, we have questions at the back. We have two questions, one and then the other. Um, hi, uh, thank you very much for the film. I'm just wondering, because uh, Esther is kind of almost a, a very hidden and almost obscure uh, figure, even within the architecture uh, circle. Yes. How did you uh, get an interest in him, and how how did he get into your notice? Uh, yes, uh, well, uh, this film is a part of a long series of films about architects and architecture. And Jester, for me, so I did films on Louis Sullivan, on uh, Adolf Loos, on Robert Maya, and Pierre Lucinerbi, and, uh, and so on, and Rudolf Schindler and Bruce Gott. Uh, almost all of them are quite not so famous and not so 
known, but they are kind of founding fathers, I think, and uh, of, let, let's say, Robert Maillard, the bridge builder, he developed in a very short time the whole vocabulary or grammar of building uh, concrete bridges, and now you see a lot of bridges that look like him, but he developed that. So I'm uh, I'm interested in yeah maybe people behind the uh, so-called uh, modernity who who founded something and Yester is for me more or less a civil engineer too so uh, like. Robert Maillard and Pierre Lucinervi, for example, they didn't like the word architect. They wanted to be civil engineers. And uh, I'm very interested in their ideas too. So, and I came about his film, I made this film, The Air Stiff, that I filmed in Saipan. And I filmed in uh, Buenos Aires, and then a friend of us, of mine, told me about so I went to Montevideo and filmed two buildings there, and then I decided this is so fantastic. I never saw such elegant and uh, thin uh, shell structures, so I thought I want to do a whole film about him. And you see, this is a kind of a building, way of building that can't be done anymore, because in those days when it was done, he had a whole group of uh, of uh, work bricklayers and and concrete workers who were able to do this kind of work, and he had a completely uh, refined technique to do uh, 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 the construction, the wooden construction that you have to do when you do it. And then he developed this technique of building these. Uh, they're actually these these tiles with the concrete are actually load bearing. They are not like they are not like ornaments or something. They are the actual structure, you know. And I was interested in that. Uh, so, and when I, a lot of people are surprised about these uh, structures because they're not very well known. I know that. Great, thank you. Second question? Mm -hmm. Hello. Um, I have watched the first film and then the second one. Basically, I'm, <laughs> I'm not making a question, but I feel it quite um, interested to say that because uh, for the first film, you try to inject some memories, some of the interpretation into the space, which give me an insight in a different way. Mm -hmm. And I can associate some of the scenes with certain interpretation when I look into the second film, when we get along with the same scene, we, I try to have some special feelings about that. And however, the second film is much more about the reality, how mm -hmm. the human use the space, yeah. how are they reacted. In the first film, you try to use different angle to, you, to particularly have the, the, the character to react to the space, but in reality, uh, according to scale and the way of people using it, is quite not associated with that. So no. how do you how no. do you feel of or how is the citizen or the p people there uh, reacting to the buildings or how do they feel about the buildings? You mean to the film or to the building? Buildings. To the buildings. Well, you see, it's a very uh, most of them are like factories or churches, the same style. And this was so amazing for me that, that we have the same building style for like uh, churches and factories and uh, official and then uh, like uh, uh, bus stations. And uh, they are in use. They are totally in use today. You see that now they and that's what I like to show too. They're in different stages of uh, uh, of uh, some people can't keep up with them because they, in the, the time uh, in, they get destroyed in time. Some of them are very well kept, and I like to uh, document that too. That's why I, for example, always make this a title in between the name of the building when is what 
when it was built and when somebody came along and filmed it. Because, for example, in 20 years from now, this will be a film about the buildings, but about the time when it was filmed too. I made a film on Louis Sullivan buildings in the Midwest of the, of the United States in 1995. And when I look at it now, it looks already like a historic <laughs> film because everything looks different, the cars, the people, every So it's, uh, it turns into a kind of document, monument of something. And I made a long film on the works of Bruce Goff in 2003. Some of the houses are gone because of uh, Hurricane Katrina or, or, or something else. So these kind of films for me are, yeah, turn into kind of monuments about architecture. And I was very glad that I could do them. And it's a lot of fun to do them, I must say so too. Great. Thank you. One last question. One last question. One. Two. Oh, wait, how about me? Maybe I can ask my question then. Okay, I'll ask my question. Uh, while watching these wonderful shell structures and the curves and the arches, I suddenly was struck, and this is because of the second time watching it, I also watched dialogues before, that our screen is rectangular. And so in that way, it really restricts the composition of all these curves that you have inside. So it becomes this amazing juxtaposition or dance between lines as well as curves. I mean, is it, I'm sure this is what you intended. Well, I intend to do very good and composed images. I construct, you see, sometimes I don't care about horizon and vertical and because I think uh, nothing can fall out of the picture, but the picture itself has to be perfectly composed and constructed. That's why I do the camera myself. I, uh, I couldn't trust the camera person, so... Uh, <laughs> and that's why I can work very fast, because I w if I would have to discuss one shot of these shots, it would take an hour or two, and then the image would even look not so as I wanted it. So uh, that's the reason why I do films. That I think it's a kind of, what you do there as a camera person is to create something like an imaginary architecture in time. At first when you look at these kind of films, you think, well, this is one shot after the other, and, and then suddenly it piles up and constructs something in your brain that's very complicated, and I like that. <laughs> and thank you, and also seeing both films, I hope those of you who did it, this, um, earlier this evening and just now, you actually suddenly see the levels of memory of what you had and how they build one on top of the other. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much. Thank Mr. you. Mr. Eric Holtz, much. and uh, this, these two films will be screened again on Monday in the afternoon, so please tell your friends to come. Thank you. Good night. Thank you.